uh, um, am, am I still a little bit loud out there? No? You're, I'm good? Okay. A little loud? I hear a little bit loud. Okay. On test. Test. What's that? On the yellow ones. Bring it down on the yellow ones. Yep, that should be, that's better. That's a little bit better. Is that better? That's a little bit better. Uh, it's just that when I get really excited and I start to shout, then everybody's ears like, I can't hear you, even though it was good because, you pe have you ever, uh, did you start recording yet? You did. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> uh, you know, when, when, when the camera's on you and they begin to record, you have to, I have to allow um, the Holy Spirit to engage me first before I begin to um, shout, uh, uh, say certain things. Um, but have you ever, uh, have you ever been in a church where, where, uh, and I think this is one of my, one of my issues is where, where they're, the message is so good, the environment is so good, and then the preacher gets so into it that he begins to shout so much and so loud that you, that you're like, wait a minute, I, I lost you five minutes ago, and I know that it's good because I feel the presence of God, but I don't understand you, so I'm just going to sit here and shout with you, okay, because that's the best I can do. No, just me. Just see, that's why I was wondering if the camera was on or not. Uh, but yeah, that's me. I, 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 I've been in some environments where, and, and you know what? Let, let, let me just be truthful. I've been that guy, okay? I've been that guy where I've taken the microphone and I shoved it all the way up into my nose and, and, and I've shouted because I can't think that anybody could hear me. And then uh, uh, later on, I, I hear that it's, uh, uh, some people come back and say, Pastor, what would you say? <laughs> So I don't remember, but I know it was good. <laughs> so, um, so that's one of my things with, with sound. I try to, uh, even on Facebook, if you guys are uh, welcome on Facebook, um, if you guys can hear us, give us a wave. If there's a sound problem, let us know so that we can fix those kinds of things. So I, I think that we're getting better with it um, as far as the quality of the sound that we're putting out week to week. And hopefully we'll be attracting some more, uh, um, some more people that, uh, that can't make it today. Um, so if you're, if you're I, I know that 80% uh, of you, that have smartphones um, are already texting somebody uh, that has nothing to do with church. So while you're there, would you please go on the Facebook page that, you know, that City Reach Live is on and go ahead and share it with your friends. Uh, let them know that you're in church and why aren't they? Uh, and they can catch uh, uh, today's message live. Also, um, uh, the, one of the other reasons that we, when we first started doing live streaming way back a while ago, and the quality just was really bad. The reason why we did it was for days like today, where um, uh, the first time that we did it was because of inclement weather. I, we, we got snowed out, and uh, we were like, you know what, let's try something. So we did. And then I had like f uh, four to six people around my, my dining room table, my kitchen, and we went live right from there. And we, we had church right from my dining room table, and, and everybody that couldn't make, and everybody, because we, we had canceled church that day, uh, logged in, and, and we had our first live stream experience. Um, but and then I found that, hey, you know what, let's keep doing it because we were having people that couldn't make it to church. And, you know, the wintertime, you know, uh, sicknesses, whatever the case was. And that was the main reasons why we started doing it. Uh, and then it caught on to everybody else. Uh, and then it became big on social media. But we had to try to improve a little bit, you know, the quality of what we were doing. And I think our quality is a little bit better. Um, we don't have, the, you know, the $5,000 cameras that some people have to do their live streams. We got... You know, just something we picked up at, uh, at Best Buy, and, and it's working for us. Amen? You know, so things that we can do better, we do better. Uh, things that we can't do better, then we just, you know, praise God that we can at least do what we're doing. Does that make sense? So uh, uh, are we having kids' church today, or you got enough? You want to go ahead and take them with you. Um, run them right on out as uh, Pastor Cheyenne takes the kids down to kids' church. Um, other thing is that today is uh, Veterans Day. Well, before we get to Veterans Day, let me get back up a second. Because it happens every year in the same order, which is on November 10th. There's a couple things that happen on November 10th. November 10th is the Marine Corps birthday. Hoorah for those out there. For my Marine friends out there that are watching, happy birthday, Marine. Hope you guys are, uh, are enjoying your Marine Corps birthday. Uh, it's, a, it's a celebration that we have. And if you're an active duty Marine, uh, it's a big deal. Because they go to a big gala. They have a ball. I'm talking about um, Marines that you have to understand that enlisted Marines... Um, uh, what they get paid is peanuts for what they do. I mean, I, I, and I'm not just talking about the fact that they put their lives on the line and are in combat and battle. I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about for what they get paid and in, 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 in what's equal to the civilian world is peanuts. 
You know, there's, there are electricians out there and plumbers and mechanics and diesel and engineers and all these kinds of, I mean, there are people out there that blow stuff up that know how to do that. And if you turn around and take that person and, and what they get paid for and what a construction worker that knows how to blow up stuff in the, in the civilian world, there, there, there's no, there's no, you know. So uh, for the Marines out there, so for them to go to, um, that's like taking um, uh, someone like me and, and, and putting them somewhere like at the crown, uh, not at the crown, at, um, at, the, at the double tree at a five-star uh, uh, ball event. You know, I'm talking about black tie event. So when Marine Corps ball, when people, when it's time for the Marine Corps birthday ball, it's a black tie event. They can't afford it any other time of year to buy their girlfriends or their wives a dress, but that's the day, that's the, when they do. And these, I mean, Marines come out there, and if you've ever seen a Marine in dress blues, there's not a black tie prettier than a Marine in blues. Amen. Well, y'all don't know about that. But anyway, I'm telling you that there's nothing finer than a Marine in blues. You know, I'm straight, and I like women, so don't get that confused. But a Marine in blues, hot. Um, and then the women that show up, that you think they're walking on the red carpet. Every year they come out with a fine, I mean, it may be costume jewelry because we can't afford anything else, but they're looking really, really good. So the Marines are out there uh, serving. The Marines are out there that are going to Marine Corps Ball, that have gone to Marine Corps Ball this year. I hope you guys have a blast. Keep it safe and party hard. Um, I said that in church, didn't I? Uh, I sure did, didn't I? But you know what? <laughs> I get a little Marine Corps flashback back there, and I remember, you know, those guys are out there, and um, they work hard, and they should enjoy their time off hard. Um, then it's Veterans Day. Today's Veterans Day. The 11th follows the 10th. Um, uh, uh, by the way, it was my, bir- my, my daughter's birthday, so she gets a, a double birthday because uh, that was yesterday. Uh, that's Samantha. She's out in uh, Tennessee. Um, but it's Veterans Day, and Veterans Day is a day that uh, um, it's not Memorial Day. You know, people get confused between Memorial Day and Veterans Day, and they think that we have two holidays. And Memorial Day is, is, is a day that we remember those that have fallen. Veterans Day is the day that we celebrate those that have and are serving. Amen. So today's Veterans Day, and if you know a veteran, go ahead and, and, and shake their hand. Thank them for their service. Um, if you're, wherever you're at in the mall or if wherever you're at walking around in the store, uh, it doesn't matter where you're at. And you see, and, and, you see, and, and these, old, these old heads, I mean, they're OGs, they, 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 and they strut their stuff. They'll, they'll wear a little baseball cap, and they've got all their insignias and emblems, and you look at it, and you ain't got a clue what it says, but you know it's, it, they served. If you, see, if you see someone like that, Take the time, just take the five seconds, tap them on the shoulder and just say, thank you for your service and move on. Uh, you don't have to ask them where they served, when they served, how they served, uh, what they got, what they didn't get, what the, all those things mean or nothing. Just thank them for their service. Uh, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing that makes a veteran feel uh, great at home um, when someone actually turns around and, and recognizes that they served, thanks them for their service. And truth be told, um, we as, 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 as just everyday citizens or whatever, we should be thankful for those that have served because freedom may be, freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. Freedom is paid for, and it's paid for by, by blood, and it's play, paid for by life. And we as Christians recognize that, probably should recognize that more than anybody else because Jesus Christ came to set us free. But just because salvation is free, just because he's given you freedom, does not mean that it didn't come with a price. It came with the biggest price that the planet could ever pay, and that was Jesus Christ on the cross. So he shed his blood for you so that you could, I mean, call heaven your home, and and there's the gospel message for you right there in a nutshell. And that is the life that we should be living and leading, knowing that that actually happened. So how much more honorable, you know, when when we when we see a, a, a service member that put his life on the line, and thank God that it's Veterans Day and not Memorial Day, that they're still alive. Amen? There are some, there, there are some, uh, uh, some of those that served, that came back, and, and, and came back with a lot of luggage, a lot of luggage. I thank God, I praise God, that I was protected from a lot of stuff. I came back with a lot, don't get me wrong. I came back with a lot of luggage. But through the grace of God and the blood of Jesus and the strength of the Holy Spirit, there are some things that, that I look back at and go, whew, that didn't touch me because God had me. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and some weren't as, as, as fortunate as I was that I don't have, you know, people talk about PTSD. That's real stuff right there. You know, uh, my, my wife experienced what it is to live with a man um, uh, with PTSD, <laughs> you know, and then once again, I thank God that, that, that I'm healed, I'm delivered. I, there, there's, there, there's certain things that I don't do because it might bring out that, that, 
that ugliness, you know. Um, I'm just going to take a minute to, to share. But if you guys remember, um, I blew my patella tenda about, what, maybe four years ago, five years ago, four, four years ago. And, um, and uh, they had me in this brace thing. And if you guys remember, we had, we had a, an, an outreach out here. And, um, uh, and like 500 people showed up and we gave away backpacks and those kinds of things. And my leg is in this big old brace. Now, I had, I had, I had uh, made a commitment to myself that I wasn't going to take any pain meds until I was done preaching. I didn't want to preach under the influence. Amen? So I still walked out there with my cane. I got out there and I preached the word and so on and so forth and went home. And when I got home, and I'm, I'm not one for meds. I, I'm just not. So uh, my wife was like, look, you really need to take some, uh, some of this. I can see that you're in pain. Why don't you go upstairs and rest? So I did. And I went ahead and popped a couple of, uh, I forget what it was, uh, what the drug was, but it was a narco- narcotic. And uh, it, it, it put me in a state of I don't know where I was at. So I was in a half-sleep, half-wake moment. And my wife, uh, as wonderful as she is, and, and, and I thank God that she has uh, some time today and this weekend to, uh, to be able to get away. And um, she came over to check on me. And in that moment that she came to check on me, I didn't know where I was. So when she touched me, I reached up to, I reached up for her neck. And as I went to go grab her neck, the pain in my knee snapped me back to where I was. I was like, oh, besides the whole yelling I did, and that I'm sure the neighbors thought my wife was beating me because it, it, it hurt so bad. But that's when I realized, you know what, there's still some issues that I'm still working through. There's certain things I don't do. I don't take drugs. I <laughs> ain't messing with no drugs. The, the doc turns around and says, oh, I'll take some morphine. I said, doc, can we get some Tylenol with extra strength or double that up, put some ibuprofen on top of that? But I ain't trying to take nothing that's going to mess with my mental state. Amen? So anyway, I thought I'd share that because um, my heart breaks for those, those that came back. I lost a friend that um, even after he retired from the Marine Corps, um, after he was out for a few months, he just died. I mean, there was no, <laughs> he just died. He drank a lot, yeah, but it wasn't, a, 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 he was a drunk. He was a good, a good drunk, a good Marine drunk, kind of drunk. You know, okay, well, he was an alcoholic maybe. But, but, I mean, he got out of the Marine Corps, and within a few months, it seemed like he lost purpose and just died. You know? Um, so and, the, and he had issues uh, from, from seeing some things that, uh, out there, but um, uh, and like I said, there's uh, my heart breaks for those that come back and are still in in some type of pain or in hurt or mental mental state. And uh, anything that I can do to help or ease that, I try. Um, at the same time, uh, I think that we as a community can support uh, uh, our veterans, whatever which way you can. So, like I said, the, the easiest thing to do. I'm not asking you to to empty out your wallets and your pockets or go serve at the at the VA. What no, but if you see one. Out there, just walking around, he's got his little, and he's proud to wear his little hat or whatever, because uh, uh, they all do just stop him and be like, hey, look, I just want to take five seconds to tell, say thank you for your service, no matter how uncomfortable that is, and just run away. I mean, that's, that's the best thing to do if you're an introvert and don't want uh, to deal with that. So, um, that's my Veterans Day thing. Um, wow. Um, this is part two. This is part two of a series called... Fear not. Fear not. Last week's message dealt with fear of intimacy. And I kind of, I, I kind of framed it about fear of intimacy and fear of intimacy with God. You know, um, only from the place, uh, uh, excuse me, just for a second, I'm, I need to. Amongst all the other issues that I have, I have, you know, that, that, that whole ADD, OCD stuff that goes on in my head. So the less things that I get. Right, can you still hear me? Okay, good. Um, so last week's message was fear of intimacy. And I don't know how many of you have had, uh, um, uh, I'm looking around, I'm trying to scan the crowd and see who's out there with, with and I don't know who's watching on Facebook. There's a few out there. Uh, I hope you guys have had the opportunity to share it. Um, but um, 
Fear of intimacy, the best way to put that is fear of commitment. How many people that are, that are, that are out there right now, and uh, I thank God because uh, my mother-in-law, is, is, uh, she, she just told us that she's going to get married after being with the man that she's been with for, I don't know, a decade and change. Um, and, I'm glad, and, and I'm glad for that, you know. Um, and that kind of reminds me of, 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 of people that are, are scared or fear intimacy or fear commitment. And when it comes to God, and I, and I framed last week's message, if you didn't see it, then it's still out there on Facebook. You can always fast forward to the, to the message port and, and skip all the, uh, the prelim stuff. But the thing about fear of commitment is that when you, there, there's something to be said about, and, and if you're out there, I'm not trying to offend anybody. If I do, that's on you because that's not my intent, okay? But if you're living with someone, and I know this because I did it. I'm not talking because, oh, I'm just sitting up here for, because I'm all righteous and I'm the pastor. No, don't get me wrong. I've been there. I lived it. I got, and I've got the issues to go with it. Hello? <laughs> I forgot to buy the T-shirt, but I got the issues. Hello? So uh, I'm, I'm telling you this because when you live with somebody, a part, and, 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 and let's take it out of Bible context because we know that the whole living with each other and the fornication, all that kind of stuff, let's beat everybody up with the Bible kind of thing. Okay, we're done with that, all right? But let's just go to the reality pieces of it. When you live with somebody, there's something different about being married to that person. When you live with somebody, it's still in the back of your head. Still in the back of your head, you've got an escape plan. Because you ain't got nothing that ties you down. You ain't got no papers that says, half is mine, bruh. What? No, nobody wants to talk to me. Nobody wants to talk to me. Okay? There's, there, there, there's no, I mean, whether you believe believe in the covenant or not, you know, I mean, you, there's, there's, there's like 5,000 songs out there that talk about the ring, you know, Beyonce talk about it, if you like it, put a ring on it, and now J-Lo's out there talking about, el anillo pa cuando, you know what I mean, when are you going to put a ring on it, you know, kind of a thing, because just putting a ring on it says I'm, I'm willing to go to the next step, but I'm still not willing to commit, hello, now, I say this in the context of that once you have committed, and with marriage, especially a Christian marriage, we understand that it's covenant. This is something that cannot be broken, should not be broken. I should have gotten at least one amen. Oh, man, we need to, go, we need to, do, some, uh, we need to do some marriage teaching up in here. It's a covenant. It's sad that in, it, forget about the world, okay? But it's sad that in the church, we have people breaking that covenant. Hello? It's sad that in the church, we have forgotten the basic Bible principles that govern our life and then should govern our marriage. And here's the deal. When, you're, when you finally get married, and it's different than living with somebody, because now you know there's papers attached. Is drama to get out of what it is that you got into. It should be. And when you're in that marriage, whether in the church or out of the church, whether you, you, you have a civil, uh, a civil union or a Christian marriage or a uh, Christian covenant, and one day I'll teach on, on what, what I believe the differences are, and you, have a, a, and you have that commitment there, it's not so easy to say, uh, you know what? It's time for me to leave. I'm done with you. Let's separate. It's not that easy. Because and then you start attaching other things like kids. It's a lot of drama. So my encouragement is that, you know, and, and that's why people are scared of that type of commitment. When I spoke about intimacy last week, it was intimacy with God because we need to learn, we need to understand that our commitment to God is greater, let me rephrase that, God's commitment to us is greater than our commitment to Him. God has created a, God has created a safe place for us to be in relationship with Him. Isn't it nice in, in, the, in, the, in the real world, in the natural world, that you can be in relationship with someone and feel safe? How many of you, and you ain't got to put your hands up, 
How many of you have been in a relationship with somebody and been unsafe? That's a scary place to be. And after that type of experience, it's very hard to turn around and say, okay, now I am going to allow myself to be in intimacy with someone else. And if you take the natural and put it into the spiritual, those same issues that you have down here, whether it be your mother, your father, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, whatever the cases are, whatever your issues are down here in the natural, they then transfer into the supernatural with God. And what I want you to do is I want you to change your mind about how this is supposed to work and stop taking the natural and, try and, and using the natural to understand the supernatural. I want you to receive the supernatural and question why the natural doesn't work that way. I want your, your, your everyday ordinary to be extraordinary so that when you see a sign or a miracle or a wonder, that doesn't surprise you because that's your normal. That's your new normal. You move from a place of distrust to a place of trust because now you go from a place of of, of intimacy with God, knowing God, loving God, God loving you, you feeling safe with him, him uh, performing these signs, wonders, and miracles in, in your life because he's just there and he loves you. And then, when you, then you're able to transfer that to other people. And instead of being cynical with other people, you're able to say, you know what? I see you through God's eyes. And though I may not agree with you, I can at least love you. Though I may not be able to handle your mouth, I can at least try to tolerate you. That was last week's message. In a nutshell. And we have to understand that all of us face fears of many different kinds, shapes, sizes. And one of the greatest challenges that we, we face in our lives is, to, is, is this fear. Which it's one thing to move into, into, it's one thing that we talked about last week, fear of intimacy. But I want to challenge you because this is where things come in. And, that, and a lot of you have fear. Fear of following God. Fear of following simply God's will. There are a lot of times that God has already laid out a plan for you. He's already given you the roadmap. He's already put the writing on the wall. He sent you the memo, the text, and the blog post. For some of you, he's even sent you a video log. Hello? And you are still trying to figure out what to do. He already told you what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And you're arguing the point of not doing it, finding another way, finding an escape. It's difficult. To simply say, God, I will do as you say. Whenever you say, however you say. Many people think that becoming a Christian is going to be like the, like the Wizard of Oz. Following down the yellow brick road and everything is going to be happy and great. But there are times in our lives that the Holy Spirit bring, begins to move us. He begins to change us, to lead us, to transform us, and lead us from where we are here to where we need to be there. I don't know about you, but I know that for me personally, change, as, as I've gotten older, change has become harder. There is something wonderful about a good routine. I love a good routine. Some, I, you know what? Sometimes I even, and don't, don't take this the wrong way because I love summer, but sometimes I, I dislike summer breaks because we lose the routine of everyday life. I know that it, when, when, you know, uh, uh, when Tuesday comes back and the kids go back to school, there's a routine. My wife gets up at a certain time. I get up at a certain time. I'm not allowed to use the bathroom between this time and that time. Because that's when she's in. That's when my son is in. Hello? I know that, it, that at a certain time, I've got uh, uh, to do this, that, get ready to go uh, to the school for practice, for a game, for a match. And then we come home. We eat dinner or junk food or, and then go <laughs> catch an hour of TiVo and then go to bed. Okay? Somewhere in there, there's a Bible reading or a prayer or <laughs> some type of devotional. Sometimes, you, you know? No, you ain't talking to me. You know, but there's something about that routine. And, and God forbid that somebody blows up that routine. 
If I get home, like if, if I decide for some crazy reason I'm going to go to the gym at 5 o'clock in the morning and I come home at 6.30 or 6, no, if I come home at 6.15 and I'm trying to get in the bathroom, oh, no. Oh, no. Now, we don't, we don't have any rifles or shotguns in the house, but she might as well have one because she'll stand in front of her and go, ch-ch-ch. ain't nobody going in there, especially not you. It's my turn. You know what I mean? And if I try to get in there at 625, she's like, uh-uh, it's the boy's turn. Get out. Because everybody's got to have the routine. Everybody's got their routine. And I think that one of the most amazing themes and lessons that we can learn from, from those involved uh, um, in this story here, that, and as we move forward with this, with this series, in the Christmas story, is overcoming the fear to trust and follow the leading of God's Holy Spirit. We need, to, we need to, to be able to just, if we know that he loves us the way he loves us and he's there for us and he's, he wants an, intimacy, an intimate relationship with us, we need to be able to move on past this and be able to trust the leading of God's Holy Spirit. If you have your Bibles, great. If you don't, it will probably be up on the screen. We're going to go to the story of Zechariah in Luke 1. And, 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 and. The story will describe for itself as, as we go through, and you begin to understand who this man is, for those of you that don't know who he is. In the time of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were upright in the sight of God, observing all of the Lord's commandments and regulations blamelessly. Just, I want to just fix that just, just for a second so you can get an idea of who these guys were. Um, these were, 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 were devout, good followers of God. These were the kinds of folks that you look at and say, you know what, I want to be like them when I grow up. You understand what I'm saying? They did everything the way they were supposed to, and nobody could ever say anything negative about them. But, verse 7, but they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well along in years. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as a priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Remember we talked about when an angel appears? This ain't no joke. This ain't, like I said, this ain't no little Valentine's cherubim with a little, with a little heart. No, uh-uh. The, we, we, when we see angels, I want you, every single time you hear the word angel, I want you to go, whoa. Okay? Because if an angel was to show up, you'd be going, whoa. You, you know, um, in that song we, we talked about, in his presence, we are undone. In his presence. One of the things that I believe that we've lost in, in, in churches overall is understanding the presence and the awesomeness of the presence of God. You have to understand that when God was on Mount Sinai, he was giving the law. He was, giving, he was, try, he was trying to, to show his love to his people by giving them the law, give you, giving us the, 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 the standards to live by for our own good. The people turned around and said to Moses, you talk to us, don't let God talk to us, because we are scared. He might actually kill us. When we come into God's presence, there's two things that should happen. An awesomeness of God's presence should should come over us. There should be, in my opinion, there should be this moment of saying, I am unworthy to be here. And Take it from a place of appreciation that I am covered by the blood and therefore can come boldly before the throne of grace. And be able to say, oh, I'm in your presence? Are you kidding me? This is awesome! I don't know about you, but that's how I, I, I'm 51 years old. And I get in God's presence and I feel like I'm 10. Hello? I turn right into a little kid again. I start doing crazy stuff that, that, that I, if I see a kid doing, I'm like, oh, that's, that's a kid dance. You know what I mean? I start waving and I start, I start doing the, uh, uh, you, you guys see the, uh, uh, the out there in front of cars. They're, they look like a, a, a floppy, a floppy um, flag. Um, 
the, 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 yeah, the tube man, the fl- you know, with the wind, you're flowing around, he's doing all this crazy stuff. That's how I feel in worship. When the God's presence hit, hits me, I'm like, yeah, I'm in his presence. No, just me? Okay, I'm by myself again today. But this is what the encounter of God should be like. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing in, at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Can you imagine? You up over here praying. There's the incense. And you in there, you know, burning them up. And now it's time to pray. And you're God, you know. I know that I need to be praying for the nation and those kinds of things. But, you know, we, we, we ain't, we're getting old. I mean, we ain't have no kids. Can we get one? And all, all of a sudden, an angel shows up. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Who are you? Kind of thing. And now here's the promise and plan of God. This messenger says, your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you. And many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or fermented drink and be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. If I challenged you and said you could be great if only you stopped the drinking, would you believe me? Many of, I didn't say, I, I didn't say that. I, I'm just saying if. Okay, don't, don't, I'm not telling you to. You know my stance on drinking? I don't. Okay? Um, but if you do, that's on you. Okay? There's plenty of scriptures that, that talk about drinking, and there's plenty of scriptures that talk about don't drink. So you want to argue with that, argue with somebody else that cares. I did say that, didn't I? I said it. Oh, well, it's out there now. So anyway, go find somebody else to argue with because you ain't arguing with me, all right? You're just not. You're just not. If you come to me and say, you know what, I- I'm, having, I'm, having, I'm having a struggle with drinking, then yes, I will help you through that. That's different. Hello? She's so like, I don't think you should smoke either. I think that's bad for you. Not only besides that, the Bible, the Bible talks about don't let anything control you. If you out there spending, if you out there spending your, your 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 food money on cigarettes and then begging for food, you got a problem. Am I making sense? Okay, let's 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 move on. Y'all get me caught up. Uh, where was I? Uh, Sixteen. Many of the people of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Piece of cake, right? Here's your fear kicking in. Here's your questioning kicking in. Verse 18, Zechariah Zachari asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in, the ye- in, in years. The angel answered, now, you got to understand that when I read Bible, I read it with an attitude. Because I believe that there's a lot of emotion, a lot of, 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 of power. I, think that, I don't think God made angels without emotion. Hello? I don't think God is emotionless either. So, the angel answered, I am Gabriel. This is... When he says this, he says, high, uh, he's talking about the highest ranking angel in heaven along with Michael. He's putting, uh, Gabriel, everybody knows who Gabriel is. He's, he's an archangel. And now he's, he, he has to now give, him, give everybody the resume. It's one of those, don't you know who I am moments. Have you not read about me? Haven't you heard stories about me? Don't you know that I can do crazy things? Don't you know I'm kind of crazy? Hello? At least that's what I say when people that are connected to me uh, uh, get hurt and they call me, uh, you know what? Don't you know who I am? The angel answered, I am Gabriel. 
I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their proper time. Ears. Hearts. Father, let our ears be open and our hearts ready to receive today, Lord God. Let the message be clear of what you would have us accomplish with this word, Lord God. Let us not just be hearers of the words, but doers of the word. Have your way in this place, Lord God. I submit to you myself. I submit to you my words, Lord God. Holy Spirit, let your presence be in this place and allow us to receive it all in your name. And God's people said, Zechariah responds with, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> Have you ever, have you ever had, uh, and I'm older, and, 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 and as you guys know, I, I, I coach kids. Um, have you ever had somebody just, like, say something to you in a way and in a fashion that you're like, seriously? Don't you know who I am? I'm Coach Ortega. I, I'm, not, I'm not CJ, your friend. We ain't buddies. We ain't friends. I have a responsibility to, to nurture you and love you and, and care about you, but don't get our relationship confused. And Zachariah responds in that fashion. He's like, are you kidding me? I believe that because if, if Zachariah's response would have been different, I believe that Gabriel's response would have also been a little bit more toned down. And we'll see that later with another angel. So Zechariah is like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Seriously? Is this a prank? Where's the camera at? And you know what? Many of us will also respond with the wrong question. If you're taking notes, number one, many of us talk ourselves out with doubt. Did everybody get a, a handout? You guys okay? Good? Okay. Many of us talk ourselves out with doubt. There's no way this could work. I'm probably having a dream right now. This can't be real. Why would God do this for me? Do you remember Jericho? Remember the walls of Jericho and Joshua in, in, in Joshua 6? But Joshua had commanded the people, do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to, and then shout. Why? Joshua had been a first-hand witness of the original group that failed. And that group opened up their mouths and said, we are grasshoppers. We are like grasshoppers in their sight. There's no way we can do this. Sometimes when God speaks, the best thing that we can do is listen and wait. Verse 21, meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. Here's a life lesson. If God tells you something and you doubt, it might be best to keep your mouth shut. I believe Zechariah needed, needed a sign from the angel to be able to move into his next steps. He needed to be able to walk away from there with something that was going to be everlasting. There are a lot of times that here at church or at church you'll turn around and come to the Lord and, and come to the altars and, and, feel, and, and feel the victory and the freedom and, 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 and feel uh, it, like awesome. And then you leave. And then two or three days later you're right, you're right back in the same hole where you started from because you forgot that what had happened was real. Well, Zachariah needed something like that, I believe. He needed to be able to go home and be like,
Number two, we must take the initiative. Zechariah had to face and say to Elizabeth, without words, okay? So I'm going to leave this out there for you. I want you to use your imagination, okay? So Zechariah had to come to his wife and be like, um, hey, baby. Without words. He had to be able to communicate to his wife that it was time to do something that they probably hadn't done in a while. Why? Because the Bible says that they were up in their ages. Now, with all that being said, I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means to be up in your ages and not. We're PG-13 right now, so I'm going to leave it alone. Is anybody tracking with me? He had, to, he had to get some, some God confidence just to do what God says. He had to turn around and be like, yo, baby, it's time. What do you mean you ain't ready? God says we are. Hello? And what does that mean? Number one, you do the believable and let God do the unbelievable. You do the believable, let God do the unbelievable. You do the credible and let God do the incredible. You do the natural and let God do the supernatural. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown, uh, shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. She was able to say that because Zechariah took the next steps. A lot of time, God speaks to you. And a lot of times, it stays there because you don't act on it. This is where James turns around and speaks of being hearers of the word and not doers of the word. We need to be able to hear the word and do what the word says. Not worry about the consequence or not worry about the the result of, of doing it. That is God's responsibility. That's like praying for somebody. You need a healing in your body? I will bust out the anointing oil. I will, bu- I will take out the big old one and pour it all over you, and we will believe God for a healing for you. That's where my job stops because it is not my responsibility, nor is it for me to heal you. That is on God. Are you following? I'm not trying to take away the responsibility of believing, but I will believe because I believe that the Word of God is true. And just because you weren't healed on the spot doesn't mean that I don't believe that God heals today. Do you understand that? Okay. So that's important as well, that you too, you don't walk away disappointed because the opposite is also true. We might might get into that in a minute. The opposite is also true. When a person does walk away healed, you try to take the credit. Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I've had people come up to me like, hey, pastor, I prayed for so-and-so and they got healed. Okay? I think I got the gift of healing. Okay. When people throw, when people throw, it's like when people come in and in, 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 uh, they, 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 they want pastor's advice, and they want counseling, I air quote it for you. Because if you come to me and say, Pastor, you know what, I'm having a, a, a difficult situation. This is my situation, and this is what's going on. <sighs> what do you think? Now you've left the door open to, okay, let's, you know, let's pray about it. Let's see what God has to say about it. Or here's what I think. This is what you should do. Yes, you should stop cheating on your wife. That's a good, that's a good place to start. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. But if you come to me already with a plan and say, well, the Lord said that I should, I'm done. Because if you, if you, trumped, if you used the, the God trump card and said, well, God told me to, Okay, then you heard from God. What do you need me for? You feel what I'm saying? But if you come with, well, you know what? I, I, I think that God is leading me in this direction. What do you think? Then I can either confirm or deny. But if you come to me with, oh, the Holy Spirit is leading me to uh, start my own church. Oh, okay, he's leading you. Um, and... God said to me that I need to start 
on January 1st, 2019. God said? Yes, absolutely. Well, then God bless you. Hello? There's no, there's no room there for, oh, wow, you know, this is a great idea. Let me cover you. Let me walk you through the steps. Let me show you how, where the resources are. Let me, let me, been through it, you know, those kind. Are you, are you tracking with me? I, and I use that as an example because it's easy to talk. It's easy, that, that's not as, as deep as when, when somebody comes to me and says, well, God said that I'm going to marry this person. She don't even like you. Let's go back to, 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 to Mary's encounter instead in Luke 1, 26. Sometimes I really question why I'm on Facebook, uh, why this is being put on Facebook Live. So let's go back to Mary's encounter. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. What was the angel's name? You sure? Okay, so let's move on. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went and to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly flavored. Favored. Flavored. <laughs> hey, English is my second language. I can have whatever speech impediments I want. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled. This was, this was a moment that she was perplexed, startled, maybe shaken up at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with a child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, we just saw a similar encounter happen with Zechariah. Now it's happening to Mary. And Mary says, how will this be? Mary asked the angel, how will this be when I'm a virgin? She was basically saying, I don't qualify. I've never done that before. <laughs> I, I have no experience in this area. I'm inadequate. I'm definitely not good enough. How? Even Moses felt he was inadequate. Some would even say that he had a speech impediment. David felt inferior. He felt too young and inexperienced to slay a giant. Please understand, to slay a giant, not to take the kingdom. David was old enough when he took the kingdom, if you follow the story. Peter was insecure, some would say, and denied Christ. I would say Peter became insecure because of fear. But Peter, as a natural, was not an insecure man. If anything, or maybe if he was, he was still loud and boisterous. Hello? So don't, don't you know, people turn around, oh, Peter was insecure. Well, truth be told, I'm insecure. But I'm loud. There's areas that I've got a lot of confidence. My insecurity comes up when I'm scared or when there's fear. A little transparency for you. Amen? Luke 22, 60, Peter replied, Man, uh, we, we, we know the story. We know the story. Let's move on to number three. God has already placed the ability, he's already placed the ability to accomplish it within us. Moses led people out of captivity. David became the shepherd boy also became king. David the shepherd boy became king. Peter, after his moment of insecurity, ended up preaching to 3,000, or 3,000 got saved. We believe that he preached even more. For me, starting this church, there was fear on every corner, fear in every angle. And, and, and you know what? Fear, even for this church, because 
this was my second go-round. Now it was a different type of church plan. My first one was just a straight-out church plan. You're with me, you're with me, let's go. This one was emerging of taking a church that was already existing to a church that, uh, to a church that, that we launched and then taking a church that had already existed and then trying to bring them both together. I'll tell you what, that was God's grace. And I thank God for his grace. Starting this church, I mean, the, the, the whole idea that people were speaking about with church planning was that you're going to fail. 90% of church plants fail within the first two years. City Reach Church, I think we're on five. Hello? So we've already beat the statistics. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with The sign that Mary needed was given to her right there on the spot. If God can do this for Mary, excuse me, if God can do this for Elizabeth, who's old and barren, imagine what he could do with you. So her response, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. She committed with her heart and soul to walk out the plan regardless of the negative repercussions. She heard the word. And then put a plan in place and began to walk the word. As you've heard me say, there comes times when we need to stop talking about it, start being about it. Not everyone will rally around your commitment to follow the plan of God. There are so many naysayers out there. And some of the naysayers aren't really naysayers. Some of them are just trying to give you the practical of what it is that you're trying to do. Know that if you start this or do this, these are the, the hurdles and the obstacles that you will face when you go to do it. I'm only telling you so you can prepare yourself for that. I'm not telling you so that you don't do that, whatever the, that may be. Hello? I've counseled uh, uh, people that want to start small groups. One of the things I tell them, look, you want to start a small group? Great, I'm for it. I believe that it, a small group is, is probably one of the best way to grow uh, uh, the kingdom, best way to grow God, uh, the church, the best way to, to do discipleship. I really do believe that. I believe it's the best way to, to have fellowship in the church. I think it's great. However, understand this, that there may be a time when you plan everything out and you've got all your snacks out and you've got all your Bible study done and you're ready to go and nobody shows up. Then what? I'm telling you up front because when it does happen, you're not so distraught that you want to quit. I remember saying to the Lord when I first started preaching, before I even became an associate pastor anywhere, before I was called pastor, I said to the Lord simply, I will preach the open chair if you give me a chair to preach to. So the fact that I've got a bunch of open chairs, Y'all think I'm preaching to you. I'm actually preaching to every single open chair that's in here. Believe that God's going to fill it. Still. Amen? Not everyone's going to rally around your commitment to follow the plan of God. Could you imagine Mary, a teenager, telling her mom, her dad, Hey, Mom, I'd like to talk to you about something. I got some big news to tell you. I'm just thankful that already happened. 
Because if my daughter would have came to me and said, um, I'm a virgin and I'm pregnant, now you try that stuff, I'm going to tell you, uh-uh. There was one Mary and Jesus was already born and it ain't you. So somebody's lying. Hello? No? Y'all don't want to talk to me. So she's going to start with, um, I have this pregnancy test. Uh, um, I, I, I need to let you know that, I, that, that I'm pregnant. Hey, let, 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 hold, wait, 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 let, let me tell you the story. I was in my room by myself, and all of a sudden, uh, this angel shows up, and what? I'm going to the room and putting some bars in that window. Hello? No, nah, y'all ain't talking to me. Fear. Fear has a way of paralyzing us. If you remember the story of Gideon in Judges 7, Gideon announces now to the people, he says, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 1,000 remained. This was a man that was getting ready for war. He had gathered the, Israels of, uh, uh, the, the armies of Israel together, and they were about ready to go. And he looked out and said, you know what? I got some scared people up in here. And as a warrior, I understand that there's a sense of fear, but we need to overcome that fear. That's called courage. But what Gideon was like, now I'd rather you guys leave. I'd rather fight with 1,000 or 500 than to fight with 22,000 that are going to be scared. Hello? Fear. One of the things that we need to remember is that we never forget that Christ lives in you. That's our last one. This point of, of conception in Mary, this, this moment where, where, where the Holy Spirit comes on her, this, she, gets, she physically gets Jesus in her. Imagine what it must be like to carry the Son of the living God. Uh, by the way, women, you can imagine that because you're women. Men, I can't imagine carrying nothing but heartburn. Hello? No? That was funny. That wasn't even my notes, and that was funny. But when you think about it, that was a foreshadow of what is happening today. That's a foreshadow of what's happening right now. The way that Jesus, now the spirit of the living God is now in you. God has birthed something in you. Colossians 1 to 7. And, and, and some Bibles say it, this is the mystery. Some will say this is the secret. The New Living Translation says, and this is the secret. Christ lives in you. So therefore, you can look forward to sharing in God's, I'm sorry. This gives you the assurance of sharing his glory. The Message Bible says it. the mystery in a nutshell is just this. Christ is in you, so therefore you can look forward to sharing in God's glory. It's that simple. We make more of it than it needs to be. You need to understand that if you're born again, John 3.3, 3, that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you should recognize and realize that God, just as it was for Mary so many years ago, that God, Jesus, is in you. But why should I fear? And the living God is not just with me, but he's in me. And let me put this one on top for you. He's for you. <laughs> See, that's just, that, 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 look, that, that, that just gives me goosebumps. That makes me say, you know, that no matter what it is that God wants me to do, regardless of how ugly it is, no matter how uh, fearful it might look like out there in, in, in the real world, let's go. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is I get beat up. So, he'll heal me. Oh, I could die. And then I'll be with Jesus. 
Different mindset, ain't it? Ain't nobody talking to me today. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to watch this myself so I can say Amen. John, First John four. You dear, dear children are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. That is a phenomenon that, that, that you just you don't have to try to explain it. All you have to do is experience it. Why would we fear to follow then God's plan? When it comes to God's plan, don't walk, don't jog, run. And if you can't run, hop. And if you can't hop, crawl. Improvise, adapt, overcome, do what you've got to do. But follow God's plan because God is with you. It was part of the prophecy. It's called Emmanuel. So what's left? I'm done. I'm done. So what's left? What's God calling you to? What is it that God has already laid a plan for you in your life you're not doing? What are those steps that you need to take next? Maybe you don't know what the steps are. There's a lot of times where God will turn around and tell you, this is what I want you to do. When God told us, when God told us that we were going to plant a church, do you know how many years it took before we actually planted the church? We went to church planting boot camp in 2002. We went to church planting boot camp in 2002. Maybe it was 2003. Okay? Uh, uh, uh. I suffer from Alzheimer's. So, no, nothing, nothing. Anyway, so 2003, I believe that we went to uh, um, church plant boot camp. It was 2007 before we planted our first church. Before, before we were eight. So, please understand this. You may get God's plan. He may turn around and say something to you like, you're going to be a preacher. What do you got to do? Well, whatever it is that you got to do may take you a couple years to do. So just because you don't see it happening right away doesn't mean it's not happening. So what is God calling you to do? What has been in your heart that fear has stopped or slowed you down? Everybody remember the movie, Waterboy? You can do it! You can. It's time to get ready. It's time to do whatever it is that God told you to do. Maybe it's to write a book. Maybe it's a new job. Maybe it's starting a family. Maybe it's setting a, 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 why am I stuttering? Maybe it's to, to set a date for a wedding. Anybody here, who am I talking to? Is anybody here not married that's supposed to be married? Don't tell me. But if you are, set a date. Okay? Maybe it's somebody on Facebook that's watching. So if you know you're supposed to get married, just do it. Oh, you know who I'm talking to? My daughter. Get married. Anyway, so I doubt she's watching, so hey. <laughs> Maybe it's a new business idea. Making that difficult phone call to reach out to a loved one that you, that, that relationship has been strained or in distress. Maybe it's broken. Maybe God wants to use you to bring healing back to, that, to your family. Maybe to start ministry. Hey, worship is open. So is children's ministry. So is youth ministry. So is uh, the pulpit. So even open. Want to preach? Let me know. I'll put you through it. Maybe it's to reach out to a neighbor. Maybe it's to take ten, ten, dollar bills and go pass them out at the mall. Or the. <laughs> Maybe it's just a faith to let go of a habit or an addiction that's defined you. I'm trying to keep it simple. Sometimes we talk about making these huge steps, and maybe all we need to do is just take a little step. Maybe it's tithing. Maybe it's serving. Maybe it's just a little, just a little step. I, my, my advocacy for this was, was a, a few months ago, which is just make a better decision today. And then keep it for tomorrow until you can make another better decision. 
doesn't have to be that complicated. If you're not reading your Bible every day, then start with once a month. Start with once a week. You'll get to once a day. Maybe just come to church. Maybe you haven't come to church in a while. Okay, so make it once a month. Graduate. Hello? Let me bring, it, let me bring this to a close. Oh, let me not forget about this. Maybe it's taking the steps to, to get out of debt. Sometimes it's baby steps. Sometimes you just got to pay your bills on time and stop buying stuff. Just saying. Oh, I know it's Christmas. Trust me, I know it's Christmas. Hello? But those are simple steps that you can take. Make a better decision. I don't have to spend $100 per person, even if I can go get a loan. Ten. Write a card. I may not know what the future holds, but I have confidence in who holds the future. I may not know what's coming tomorrow, if tomorrow comes. Listen to this parable concerning fear. I call it the fear of failure parable. Some of you are going to look, once I read the parable, you're going to be like, huh, that's an interesting way of looking at that parable. But here it goes. Matthew 25. Three sets of talents given for three different guys. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid. Went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here it is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. Take the talent from, he took the talent from him and gave it to the one who has the ten talents. After reading that talent, I don't want, what I want, if I'm going to have fear, I want to have fear of not trying. I want to at least try. Because if I try, I fail, and I believe that there is no losing in failing. There's learning. When I fail, don't get me wrong, I'm hard-headed. So I may have to fail two and three times before I learn my lesson. But the lesson's coming. No? Nobody? God wants to do more in you and through you than you could ever realize. God is using unlikely people in overlooked places for extraordinary things. That's us here today. Who does God call most often? God calls, if you remember Moses, God uses the insecure. Get some confidence. Remember what I said earlier. You do the believable, let God do the unbelievable. You do the credible, let God do the incredible. You do the natural, let him do the supernatural. God will use insecure people like all of us here. Who does God use? God uses unlikely people like David, the shepherd boy turned king. We can talk about that all day. He uses people like Peter. God uses failures. God uses disappointments. Failure is never final with God. These are all your hashtags if you want to hashtag any of this. Failure is never final with God. Don't blame yourself for the decline or you might take credit for the climb. That's what I was talking about before. If you take credit, if, if, if something fails and you take credit for the failure, you're also going to try to take credit for the success. The very point of failure may be the platform that God uses to help other people. Are you willing to fail? Are you willing to be hurt? Are you willing to go through something so that God can use you to help somebody else? Don't answer that question because it gets real. Don't answer it until you're ready to answer it. Key thought. You have to step out to find out. You've already been in my messages where I've talked about stepping out of the boat. 
You have to step out to find out. Sometimes you step out and find out. It's like stepping out into the street. If you don't look both ways, boom, you'll get hit by a car. Life happens, but you ain't going to find out until you step out. I want to be scared of not trying. I want to take the chance. My wife and I used to say, it's always a go unless God says no. That's why we're here now. It's always a go unless God says no. Other people didn't do it because they were afraid of failing. I am no longer afraid of failing. So what is God calling you to do? What is the Holy Spirit saying? You should be asking yourself, what is the Holy Spirit saying to me through this message? What is he saying to you? What are you scared of? What keeps you from following God? Message one was intimacy. What's keeping you from trusting God? What's keeping you from allowing God to be intimate with you and you intimate with God? Message two. What's keeping you from following whatever God's calling your life is? Please stand. I'd like to pray for you, and as you go, know that you can go when I'm done praying. Uh, I don't know if Angelique's got something back that she can queue up and she can play. Uh, if you need prayer, we'd be glad to pray for you individually. Um, as always, the, the baskets are in front if you want to give. And in the back uh, for our, our, our guests, uh, welcome to City Reach. If this is your first time. Uh, guys, would you make our guests feel welcome, please? I always tell everybody to come back at least two or three times to find out if this is your kind of crazy or not. You know, I hope you guys, uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm not the real pastor here. I'm just a guest preacher. I was joking. I wasn't lying. There's a difference. So welcome, brother. Um, we don't, uh, just as a matter of, just info-wise, info um, we don't do a big, you know, let's stop and, and, and try to shake people for their money. Uh, we teach on giving. We teach on, on the principles of stewardship. Uh, we'll, there'll be another one coming around. So we decided that rather than trying to strong arm people, we leave baskets up front and one in the back. So as you get ready to leave or as you come, feel free to give at that time. Um, trust me, your money is getting prayed for a, a lot, especially in the winter when the bills go through the roof. So, um, But that's not, this isn't, um, I, I have it in my heart. That I, I'm trying to walk out the stewardship principle of trusting God personally. And as a pastor, if I'm going to trust God in all this other area, as far as your growth, your, 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 your security, your prosperity, your health, your, your spirituality, and, those, and I'm trusting God for those things, then I also have to trust God that he's going to pay the bills. So that's the reason why we don't do a whole lot of, uh, you know, I, I don't play sad videos of, uh, of Dominican kids in Dominican Republic uh, that are going hungry. I, I don't do that, you know. If that was the case, I'll show you some pictures of my cousins, you know. Um, that, that live right here in Reading, so. <laughs> I am so wrong. I am so sorry. All right. If you lift your hands up towards heaven, receive a blessing that comes from the Lord. God has instructed his priest to pray this. I believe that this is uh, uh, a, a blessing that not only you can receive, but it's already yours and that you should be walking. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make it shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Father, I thank you for this message today, Lord God. Lord, I thank you that in your presence there is no fear, Lord God. I thank you that you have already laid out a plan for us, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come upon us and remove any fear that we may have in following your will. I thank you for today's message. Let us continue to be doers of the word, not just hearers. Lord, let us make a difference today as you've made a difference in us today. Now I pray, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord.
as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness in his name. I pray and God's people said, if you receive anything from the Lord, would you give him the praise, please? I would love to pray for those individually with, uh, with, with anyone who's fighting fears. Uh, the altars are open and the rest of you are free to go. If you'd like, you can stay in worship. Hug somebody on the way out. Greet somebody on the way out. God bless you as you enjoy your Sunday. Mm-hmm. You said saving. I'm saving what? I save nothing. <laughs>